acting like you some one man GPS? God damn it! We lost! We fucking super lost, man! Tell him, McCluskey! Tell him what time it is! What is up, music friends? Sorry for the up close and personal. I'm out and about with no real equipment except for this cell phone and I'm holding it, of course. But I uh, wanted to get you a message from the office, which is most oftentimes not from an office. Hopefully, never again, but it's, it's likely it will come up where I'm giving you a message from the office, hopefully with some real equipment so you can hear me better. But uh, for today, I wanted to get this out, okay? I grew up in a heavily democratic family, which makes me a pretty big black sheep. And now that I think about it, I'm a black sheep for all kinds of reasons, <laughs> is the truth. We'll get into that later if you want to hear it. But uh, the biggest discrepancy that I find between the philosophies, ideologies, things like that, is that most of the lefties, Democrats, don't understand two things. Number one, how the party has changed. Okay, so like what was conventionally democratic 10 years ago is certainly not the way it is today. And that's just a random time reference and it's just totally changed. And understanding what that change looks like is important. And a lot of people haven't realized how different that is in a negative way. That's number one. And number two is that they, people that don't necessarily agree with me about politics and the fact that I'm going to vote for Trump very proudly, um, they assume that the media and this current administration actually has your best interest at heart. It's the biggest irony of all time when the news, number one, wants you to have amnesia about everything, including 2020 and all kinds of stuff, and continues to be the ultimate form of hypocrisy over and over and over again. Today's first clip, these are all pretty short, so please stick around. Today's first clip is showing you what the mainstream media, forgive that term, I know it's like most of the media and it's tossed around too much, but it is true as a term, was saying about Queen Kamala, Kamala, I understand her name, Kamala was saying about her during her vice presidency and how people thought about her performance and engagement, awareness, that stuff. Take a look at this, I'll be right back. There are reports that say that you have the lowest approval rating of any vice president. Well, there are polls that also say I have great approval ratings. <laughs> Swing voters don't like Harris. How big a drag is Kamala Harris on the ticket? She's a pretty big drag. I think she was arguably Biden's worst political decision. They don't like her. There's lots of reasons they don't like her. Kamala Harris's approval rating is now at 28 percent, which is uh, an historic low for any modern vice president. We're hearing it from main, mainstream media, uh, one outlet after another, one leak after another. Uh, that Kamala Harris is the worst vice president ever, the worst politician ever. We don't see the vice president. What, what people are saying to me, and I'm sure they're saying it to you, where's the vice president? Some White House officials are feeling that, that she came off looking unprepared for inevitable questions about when she might visit the southern border. We've been to the border. You haven't been to the border. I, and I haven't been to Europe. And I, I, mean, I, don't, I don't understand the point that you're making. The point that Lester Holt was making was, was obvious to anyone else who was watching this interview, which is that the issues at the border are inextricably linked with the portfolio that she's been given. The border is secure. We have a secure border. Bidenomics is working. Uh, prices have gone up. And families and individuals are dealing with the realities of of the, that bread costs more the gas costs more and we have to understand what that means that's about the cost of living going up he picked kamala harris to be his running mate she was ranked and is ranked as the most liberal senator in the united states senate so he could have gone the other way but he went he went to the left Joe Biden is running for re-election, and I will be his ticket mate. Full stop. Full stop. That's it. Congratulations. You played yourself. So this woman that everyone hated is now going to be the savior for the country from their own policies. No. It makes no sense. She was shoved in there by default because they had to keep the campaign money that Biden raised or they were screwed. So she was the only option. She's no savior of anything. And her policies are the most flip-flopped, whack stuff ever. And I can list them all out for you. Everything from fracking.
fracking to her position on the border and who's a criminal and who's not a criminal. It goes on and on. It's not my job. It's all over the internet. You might try X, okay, that Elon owned because you can look a stuff up there and you'll actually find it. <laughs> so there's that. Anyway, check this next clip out. This is a guy, former Democrat, um, something Weinstein. He's, he's sort of a someone, but seems very articulate and explains why he's not voting for them anymore. And it's very obvious why. And that was the historical thing I wanted to make clear to you guys about how a lot of very intelligent, logical people have recognized how the party has changed over the years. Take a look. And I love every damn one of you. I think you know that. Just be perfectly clear about this. I think the modern Democratic Party is an existential threat to the Republic. And although I am a Democrat, I've been a Democrat my whole life, the party that I see in front of me today is literally the inverse of the party I signed up for. This is now the party of war. This is the party of racism. This is the party of censorship. I don't recognize this party. There is no conceivable scenario in which I would vote for Kamala Harris. I just simply will not do it. Am I open to voting for Trump? I am. I'm especially open to it if he is partnered with Bobby Kennedy, because what that tells me is that my values, which are a much closer match for Bobby's, are represented in that. It, and that's really what I want. I want a coalition to redefine American politics, because frankly, we have a long-standing problem with corruption, which has now turned into something else. Um, with with the modern Democratic Party, but we need we need to rethink the way we govern ourselves so that corruption is not the dominant force, and a coalition is the way we're going to do that. And uh, what else? A new song I'm coming out next month. One man band. Yes, got the sound yesterday. Final sound. Uploaded that bad boy for distribution for next month. It's really crisp. I am going to do a simple local music video here um, to go along with it, and. We'll see you guys real soon. Ciao.